Hello guys, I've got a new build for you this week. It's a cheap little diecast truck that I got on AliExpress.com and today I'm just going to show you what's in the model and what I plan to do with it. So obviously I keep an eye on YouTube videos for um, secret control conversions and stuff like that and every once in a while I see a little truck like this, a man truck, sometimes it's a cement mixer or could be a um, a dumpster uh, truck, you know the truck that picks up dumpsters. Uh, I occasionally see them, and I was wondering where did they get them. And I eventually found that they're actually a really cheap Chinese uh, diecast model that's on uh, AliExpress.com. So obviously, being a cheap model, it's not the best build quality. We have a solid axle here on the front, and the kind of dump bed is a bit. Uh, it's a bit crap looking really, it's uh, not the best, but the cab looks okay, it's reasonable, the the door's open, which is alright, this one's a little bit wonky in mine, so it's not, not the best, like I said the build quality is not the best. I don't think there is any other 132 trucks like this, so if you do convert one of these, it is kind of a unique thing, it's unlikely that if you go to a show anyone else is going to have one, but uh, if we take a look at the little features that are useful to us, see here the, the glass for the lights here is like the CQ model it's just kind of molded in but they've left the holes here so we can just put some LEDs behind that and illuminate through them that's good on the rear here it's just a flat plastic thing so again we can just drill some holes through that put our LEDs there and that would be pretty ideal too now the tricky part we have a solid front axle so what I'm hoping to do, and hopefully you guys will find it interesting, is to design a steering axle and then 3D print it. I'm going to try and design the servo into the axle so that it's one kind of compact unit that we can just stick in here. We'll obviously have to cut away bits of the mud guards here because they're obviously going to hit once the wheels are turning. But uh, we can deal with that. At the rear of the model then, I'm going to try and... I'm thinking a pulley system might be the best way because if I just power one set of wheels, say I, I pull I power this set of wheels right and we get to a hill and now just maybe the hill is like this. So these wheels are contacting, these wheels are contacting, but these ones aren't. So then uh, they'll just free spin and we won't get anywhere. I think the simplest way to drive both sets of wheels would be to put a little motor here and have a pulley going from here this axle driving this axle and then pulley going from this axle to this axle driving the other axle so I think that would let it roll along nicely enough the bed of the truck here I think that lets the model down a little bit it's uh, a bit too big I think uh, something something just funny about it apart from that it's just you know obviously cheap plastic which uh, has a benefit to us because obviously it's lighter if it's just made of plastic but there's something a bit funny looking about it so I might change that and I've noticed that the Britain's grain trailers have a similar enough uh, length but they're slightly narrower but obviously the Britain's grain trailers are die cast so it would be much heavier, much harder to lift. To get it to lift uh, I might do a screw drive system or I might just try and squeeze one of those larger motors into this because obviously we have a huge amount of space on this model compared to pretty much every other model that we've worked on. We might be able to just squeeze a big motor in there somewhere that can just lift this whole bed loaded easily. Well this might indicate that they got the scale pretty right. The CQ men here, they fit into the model pretty perfectly. To give you an idea of the scale of the man truck, here is the Scania R620. And as you would expect, it's uh, much much taller than the than the man truck. but it's only a little bit wider, so I reckon they've done a pretty good job of the scale on this cheap model. These trucks come in a lot of different forms, there's kind of like cranes and fire engines and things like that. They don't maybe look the best, these ones, I mean, the more plastic on them, the kind of worse they, they look. There's the one we have, the little dump truck. Fuel one, square box, maybe not so good. The little garbage truck, flatbed, I had a good look at the pictures of the flatbed and the, the crane looks rubbish and the flatbed looks pretty crap too to be honest. The, the one with the dumpster looked okay from the pictures 
and the uh, cement lorry looked okay like I said I don't think you can get models like these in 132 scale from any other manufacturer so I think they're kind of the best best you can do really so I've gone for this one and I'd say those two are probably okay they're not the best looking models but the thing about them is that there's very few people uh, who are going to have radio controlled uh, truck with a dumpster or a cement truck or dump truck you know because they because they're just not there you know can CQ don't do them the CQ do the lorries and you can modify the lorries and you'll see that on YouTube quite a bit but uh, this is a pretty decent base to start from to make a, a simple radio controlled lorry okay well let's take this part and see exactly what we have to work with here uh, there only appears to be three screws holding it together so I'm not exactly sure what pieces are going to come off but they're going to be fairly big pieces I'd say maybe all that they're holding together is the axle and the cab so let's take a look we might be able to get the rear axle off just this okay looks like we have to take all three out all three screws out to get the chassis off and a screw at the front seems to loosen the cab as well so seems to be stuck in the middle there it's stuck at this piece here maybe it's glued in oh there we go looks like it was glued to that little post there that's alright. You can see under the cab, huge amount of space for the steering. So this piece that come off here, I'm pretty sure I'm just going to replace this with 3D printed parts that do the same. For example, at the rear of the model here, we took this screw out here. So when I make a, a 3D printed piece to drive these rear wheels, I'll just screw it into that mounting post and that's all, and it'll be the same with the steering, I'll use the mountain points at the front one of them is in the cab so I'll have to include that in uh, whatever way I design the steering rack as you'd expect the wheels were just a press fit thing so you just pull the axle out to get the wheel out we'll probably have to replace them with a, some sort of a screw like a self tapping screw something like the screws from the body that should screw it into the the steering mechanism that we're going to have to make for it. The wheels are just plastic but they seem to be finished alright and the tyres seem to have quite a lot of grip so I'd say we should have no problem getting grip from our drive wheels. Since we have no differential but we have grippy wheels there's a good chance that uh, it'll be difficult for this model to take corners but we'll just see how we get on. I've already started to work on the steering for this model. Um, I have this little piece here that's going to mount this servo on there'll be a piece here to pivot for the wheel and the same on the other side they'll just connect to the servo arm there and obviously as the servo arm turns the wheels will turn so that's gonna fit in right a bit here where the wheels used to be I'll have to cut out a section out of here and this was our mountain hole there which is this pin goes up through there So that goes something like that so behind that pin we have all that space for the servo so that'll fit up there no problem I'm not sure exactly what height it goes to but somewhere in around there so that should be absolutely fine for the steering to drive the model I'm thinking to mount an N20 motor I'll 3D print a section to hold the two axles in place and hold this motor around about here I'll have to cut a little bit of a slot out of the frame here to let this down then I'll try to 3D print some pulleys now, I'm not sure uh, how easy that will be but uh, I'll give it a go anyway and we'll see if that works so then I'll run a pulley like a, an o-ring something like that from the motor here to the first axle so that'll drive that axle then I'll have another pulley on the other side of this axle that will connect to the axle at the rear and hopefully that way I'll be able to drive the two wheels with enough power to pull this around the die rail. That just seemed the easiest way to get all the rear wheels driving. So we'll see if that works. It might not work. So hopefully that will provide enough drive to pull this around. But 
if it doesn't I'll just have to come up with a different idea uh, I'm pretty sure I can get some chain drives in a hobby shop or something that I can connect the wheels together with so that's the plan for the man dump truck if you have any comments or suggestions for this build head over to the forum or post your comments below the video here and if you like the video make sure and hit the thumbs up or uh, share the video hopefully this will be an interesting enough build since we're building the steering from scratch and we're using the belts uh, to drive it hopefully uh, hopefully that will work out and uh, I think that's pretty much everything for this video so thanks very much for watching